Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dave, and today I'm going to go through the COVID-19 uh, guidelines for the law enforcement and firefighters. Uh, as a standard disclaimer, this document is updated regularly, so please make sure that you check either the link, which is uh, bit.ly slash COVID-911, or use your phone and get the uh, QR code. But you always want to double check and make sure that you're using the most current version of this document. All right, so first off on the first page here, it talks about uh, the general guidelines and what we need to do. So if you suspect uh, COVID-19, first off, how are you going to know whether or not you should be concerned uh, with somebody that you're about to interact with that may or may not have uh, COVID-19? Um, so first off, you're going to go based on dispatch. So if dispatch uh, is asking questions related to screening for COVID-19 and they give you some kind of an indication over the radio or alert, a code word, whatever, that tells you that this person may have uh, risk factors consistent with COVID-19, then you want to assume that they do and you're going to take those standard precautions just to be safe. Uh, also, if EMS suspects that the person has COVID-19, so if EMS is already on scene and they've assessed this person that you're now assisting with, if they tell you that the person has uh, risk factors consistent with this, then you also want to take these same precautions. Uh, and then finally, if the subject reports a cough, a fever, or trouble breathing, and the cough seems to be the one that's a little bit uh, questionable sometimes, uh, just a an inadvertent and random like clearing of the throat doesn't really count as a cough as we're talking about here. Um, but a true cough, uh, fever, whether it's based on a temperature reading or if the person just feels like they have a fever or if they're having some kind of trouble breathing. Um, any of those things, we want to be cautious and assume that they may have COVID-19 and we use precautions because of that. So what precautions are we talking about? So for one, if you're not within about six feet of that person, you're not in an enclosed space with them, then uh, you are you have very low risk. So you do want to keep some distance. About six feet is the recommendation, six to eight feet, depending on the environment. Uh, if you have to go closer than that with them, uh, then for one, you want to be wearing a mask and goggles or some kind of eye protection. Uh, standard reading glasses are not quite good enough because they don't cover the sides of your eyes. So you want something that really wraps around the sides as well. So either, um, you know, safety glasses that do that or goggles. Then you want to put on gloves. So some kind of uh, nitrile gloves to keep yourself protected and a gown if possible. So if you have a gown, great, you can use that or some kind of uh, protection there. And then another important part is you want to make sure that you're putting a mask on the subject as well. So whether that's a, a medical patient or a subject out in the community that you're going to be close to and engaging with, you want to put a mask on them as well or ask them to put a mask on. So just a standard um, like surgical mask or, or mouth cover, that's really to prevent if they cough or sneeze from it getting onto you. Um, Wherever we wind up transporting this person, whether it's the hospital, the jail, or anywhere else that they end up going, we do want to let the place know that they're on their way. So we want to alert the destination. And then finally, we want to decon ourselves and our gear and our vehicle if they went in our vehicle. So how do we do that? All right, first off, for personal decon, if you are deconning yourself, number one is wash your hands. Gloves are great, but they are not adequate protection. You still need to wash your hands. So number one is wash your hands. Soap and water is best. Uh, scrub hard for 20 seconds at least. If you don't have soap and water, you can use hand sanitizer, but it's still a good idea to wash your hands afterwards. So wash your hands, soap and water, wipe down all of your duty gear. So any kind of hard surfaces, um, gun belt, firearm, and really anything that's exposed that's a hard surface, uh, you want to wipe that down with some kind of an approved uh, cleaning wipe. Uh, and then you're good. So you're back in service once you've deconned yourself. Now, if you weren't wearing a gown and you got something 
you know, any kind of like fluid or uh, anything splashed on you, then in addition to this, you might need to actually change your clothes or shower. But um, if, if that's not the case, then just washing your hands and wiping everything down is adequate for self decon. Um, then your gear. So if you do need to decon your vehicle, you want to wear a mask and gloves and you want to wipe down all hard surfaces. So any kind of gear and any hard surfaces in your vehicle, you want to wipe down with an approved cleaner or wipe. You also want to allow your vehicle to air out. So open up all the doors, or if you can't do that, at least open up all the windows, let it air out as much as you can. They don't currently have a set time on how long is appropriate to decon. Basically, they say long enough for you to transfer your patient or transfer your your prisoner if, if it's that and then do your paperwork. So in the time that you are doing your transfer and your paperwork, um, when you come back, then your vehicle should be adequately ventilated. You still do need to wipe down all those hard surfaces, though. Uh, and then your vehicle's back in service. So once you've done um, that for decon, you are good there. Exposure risks. So what are some risk factors that we would consider a possible exposure for us as a public safety person? So as a, a police officer, um, deputy, uh, firefighter, if we are uh, worried about exposure, some of the things that we need to worry about are if we got fluids on us. So if the person coughs, sneeze, got any of their fluids onto us, that is a concern. If we got coughed on, if we were not wearing a mask, so uh, even if these other things happen, if we're wearing a mask and they're wearing a mask, our risk is still low. But if we didn't follow our PPE or our protective equipment and um, we didn't have the subject wearing a mask or I wasn't wearing a mask, then that's going to raise the risk level here. So if you think you have an exposure, you want to report that to your supervisor and follow your department policies as far as how to respond to an exposure. All right, so talking about masks, um, they do recommend an N95 mask if it's available and if you're fit tested for one. So if you don't know what an N95 mask is and you didn't do a yearly fit test for one, then um, N95 is not really going to be the option for you. You're probably just going to want to use a simple surgical mask, um, which is also appropriate. So Really, the N95s are geared more towards certain higher risk activities and procedures. So if you don't have an N95 mask, that's okay per the CDC, but they do recommend at the very least you need some kind of a, a medical mask, surgical mask, something like that that's going to protect yourself. Um, gown. So what about a gown? If you have a gown available, great. If not, um, you know, just do the best you can to keep yourself protected. As long as you don't get fluids or liquid on you, you're okay. And you also can skip the gown if it's going to interfere with job function. So for instance, if putting on that gown is going to make it so that you are not able to get to your firearm or, or anything on your gear, um, or if it's going to prevent you from doing your job, um, then you can also skip wearing the gown. So just make sure you wipe down everything if you don't wear a gown. With the subject, for them, all they need is a simple uh, surgical mask. So they do not need an N95 mask. They just need a simple surgical mask that's really just to protect um, them from coughing or sneezing on us or anyone else. Then eye protection is really important. So um, the eye protection is not really needed for the subject that we're dealing with, but it is important for us. So we want to wear some kind of eye protection. When we're picking what kind of wipes or cleaning supplies we want to use, we do want to make sure that we're using something that is approved as a uh, use for viral pathogens. So if you're not sure, check out the link below where it links to the CDC's website where they go through all of the different cleaning products and make sure that it is something that is approved. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you click subscribe, you'll get a notification every time we upload a new video with this topic. Also, make sure you check those links because this information does change rapidly. So check the links. You'll get the most current info. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll try and get back to you with an answer as soon as I can. Thanks.